So here we are, we're fast forwarding. What was the company valued at in 1983? $100,000. It was valued at $100,000 in 1983. What is SRC Holdings Corp valued at today? Well, at the risk of having our employees kidnapped by people on the streets, okay, remember this quickly became an employee-owned company, mm -hmm. all right, with mass distribution of stock throughout the last 34 years. So we have a, a lot of shareholders. Um, of the shareholders that have grown from day one to now that have retired, they've retired with almost $100 million in their retirement accounts, okay? Uh, the company to this day is still worth another $100 million. So the, the employees uh, were able to take $100,000 worth of equity and turn it into $200 million worth of value, okay, over that 34-year period of time. Now, probably one of the smallest, I'm guessing, divisions of SRC Holdings Corp is Great Game of Business. Yeah. But that is probably what the larger business community knows you best for. They probably don't know the, the many subsidiaries that have spun off. They may or may not recognize the names, but Great Game of Business is what everybody knows. That's what we studied in business school. And Poor kids. <laughs> But I've heard you say that was, you all knew it took every brain in the company yeah. to save oh. the company. And so yeah. how, how did Great Game of Business evolve into what it became? Did it, did it start off simply as open book management and then it evolved? Or did you have a great Okay, look, we did not, we, we, were here to, we were trained to make a product. I was trained to make a tractor. I was trained to make an engine. Most people are trained to maybe run a retail store, okay, and sell ladies' fashions or kids' toys or, you know, basically what you are is you're trained to make something, okay? When we went out to seek capital and to, the, to try to borrow the money, people, um, we gave them all our qualifications to build huge engines, you know, really tough stuff, chemistry, physics, science, okay, computers, and, uh, the investment community could care less. What they wanted to do was know the specifications of the company. And there were two different things that you were being taught in life. One was great service, great products, okay. And then the investment community was only looking at great companies, all right. It was kind of odd. I spent, we spent 14 years living in the metrics with manufacturing, but not one of those metrics had to do with the company. Hmm. So when we sought capital, when we went out and you know, we try to give them our degrees and, and making things, okay, and all the associations on inventory control and things of this nature. Could, they could care less. They just, it was amazing that uh, we thought we were great manufacturers and nobody could care less. What they wanted to know was how fast we're we going to pay these loans back, okay, what collateral do we have, and they spoke another language. So what we saw, we saw there were two different uh, metrics that we were teaching people, okay. You were teaching people how to make something, and it wasn't the company. It was a product, it was a thing. And yet the really wealthy people were looking at the company as the product, okay? Mm -hmm. So we thought, why in the heck do you have two separate metrics? Why don't, what if you turn your associates on to making a company, wouldn't they make better products and make better services, okay? And what if we said, don't forget all your skill sets on, on making the engine, but what if you just helped us create an outrageously successful company? What, what, what if we told you the metrics of a business? Mm -hmm. Keep building the engine, but think about the metrics in terms of a company, all right? Margins that you have, inventory terms that you have, you know, receivables that you need to shorten, payables that you need to lengthen. Okay, what, what if we developed and gave them the respect that they, in fact, could understand the language of business, all right? Truly understand it. Not only from the standpoint of doing it at work, but bring it home as well. Okay, know how to do a checkbook. Okay, don't get into so much debt. Understand it, compounded interest. Okay, I mean, what we saw, and we were very young at the time, you know, people coming to work, and the minute they got a job, all of a sudden taking on more debt than they can actually service in the hopes that they get more raises down the road, and they would just big these deep holes. Very similar to our government, which has like $19 trillion in debt. So. We, we, we couldn't figure out what harm would it be to open up our books. What harm would it be that if you wanted to create the security. Now remember, we came off a company on the brink of bankruptcy, okay? And they never helped the, asked us to help them 
you know, with the bankruptcy, they continually asked us to make more engines. They gave us raises and promotions and merit, you know, and merit badges, okay, but the company died, all right? Mm -hmm. So we thought that if we would focus on the idea of a balance sheet, that if somebody went to work and they can understand that if you were not 89 to one, you're comatose, okay? You, know, you better not necessarily go out and take on some additional debt, you know, and you better make a decision whether or not you want to work for a company that that's leveraged, okay? And understand that if you understand the health of a balance sheet, you understand the health of a company, that there's a direct relationship between the two. And you, and you can take a lot of fear out of the workplace if you really could be able to understand how secure your company was. So we thought it was common sense. We just thought that um, let's take uh, the training programs that we have on the product and now create training programs where they can understand business. They can understand income statements, balance sheets, and capital statements, all right? And we just thought that that was kind of like the smartest thing to do. Why consolidate all those financials? Don't assume that they can't understand them. Put it in a safe, lock the safe, and then design a whole, whole new organizational structure that just passes out instructions to get what's in the safe, but you don't want to tell them what's in the safe, okay? Mm -hmm. it, it, wasn't any, it was instinctive. It wasn't anything we read anywhere, okay, that that was the right thing to do, all right? Mm -hmm. Because at that particular point in time, people were using that kind of information for power, for control, for whatever reasons, and a lot of it, they didn't even know it themselves, okay? Most of the people running companies um, allow their accountants to know it, their lawyers to know it, but even the executive management team didn't really understand the financials of the company, but yet that was the thing you were supposed to be able to get to.